Hello everybody, this is Tim once again. I recently watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and as I've been doing, I'll just go ahead and give my rating for this film just up front here. Uh, I'll go ahead and give this film like a low four stars. That's how I feel about this film. It's a low four star film. It's not as good as the first movie, but uh, it's still really good. Uh, I would say this is definitely a film I'd wished I'd seen in theaters. It's a lot of fun. It has a completely different style than the first movie. So if you start, if you watch the first movie and go straight into this film without knowing like what to expect, you'd probably be disappointed. I don't like the representation of Leatherface here as much as I did the first one. I don't mind it being like a black comedy and Toby Hooper doing a completely different, completely different style with the film. I actually commend him for that. That's pretty cool. But um, as far as like the representation of Leatherface, he's more goofy here, and I don't mind there being comedy in the film, black comedy. I mean, but when you got the actual. Uh, characters who are supposed to be feared being so so silly, they kind of uh, kind of lose lose the terra or lose the essence of what makes them scary, and they're not really well scary anymore. <laughs> but Leon Leatherface is a little bit too goofy in this film for me. It's really it's kind of funny the way he like swings his chainsaw over his head all the time. <laughs> it's it's neat and entertaining the way he does it, but they do it a little bit too much, and it kind of makes the character seem like a just a joke a little bit. But it works. Um, to jump right into the film here, the film stars uh, Caroline Williams and Dennis Hopper. Um, you got a different leather face in this film. I'm not sure the actor. And you got Bill Mosley. Uh, Bill Mosley in this film, I mean. Uh, he's the highlight of this film, to be honest. Without him, this film would not be anywhere near as good. <laughs> but um, to jump right into the film here, the basic story is that it's been a, a couple years after the last movie. Uh, you get the name of the family in this one. They're the Sawyers. How they didn't get caught after the first movie, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, because they seem to like have the IQs of grapefruits, so I don't really see how they could possibly have got away from the police. But whatever. It's not really. You're not really supposed to think about that kind of stuff. Uh, the cook is in this film again, uh, played by Jim Sidal again. He does fine again. His acting is good again. He's the. Uh, you even get a scene in the film where he's like got his uh he wins like the chili championship or whatever. It's entertaining and somebody like uh bites a hoe to something hard and it's a tooth and he grabs it and it's like well it's a hard shell of peppercorns. It's <laughs> he's funny. Um you get Caroline Williams in the movie, she's hosted she's a radio DJ. Uh you got these yuppies driving at the beginning of the movie acting like jackasses. <laughs> they keep calling in and telling her they want to see bright lights and big titties, which that's that sounds like fun too, but <laughs> They're really annoying. Uh, they played chicken with this other vehicle coming towards them. It's of course, uh, uh, I believe it's uh, it's well, it's the Sawyer family. I was trying to think of which one it was that was driving. I'm pretty sure it's probably a Bill Mo Bill Mosley. But uh, they played chicken with them, uh, fucking with them. That pissed them off. Later on in the movie, they call back in on the radio station, fucking with Caroline Williams again. Um, then you get the best action scene in the whole film, the bridge scene. Uh, where it plays Oingo Boingo's uh, No One Lives Forever, which is a really good song and I enjoy, so I really like this scene. Great action scene on the bridge. You got um, the yuppies are like driving and Leatherface pops out of the back, no, in the back of the truck, and he's got a uh, fucking the hitchhiker from the first film who comes back in this as a corpse, <laughs> which is funny and entertaining. His name is Nubbins and he like wears him as like he's like puppeteering him. He's got the chainsaw in his hand. And he likes to saw at the yuppie's car, and one of them has a gun, and they shoot and shoot nubbins basically. And then the uh, Leatherface uh, chops one of their saws one of the halves of their heads off. This film is loaded with gore, unlike the first one. There's more gore in this one scene here than there was in the entire film of the first one. He chops off one, he saws off one of the uh, the one that's driving, uh, half saws off half his head. Uh, and then uh, you see the special effect, the blood squirting out and everything. It's good, but when you see it from the back, it's obviously a puppet, so that kind of takes it away a little. But it's still really good. Their vehicle crashes, but uh, Caroline Williams records the whole thing over the radio. Now she has evidence, and then you get Dennis Hopper in this film as a uh, as a cop, and he's like obsessed with hunting these people down and killing them on the Chainsaw family because uh, he was related to Sally and Franklin from the first movie. He was their uncle, I believe. Um, so you get entertaining scenes where he like goes out and fucking buys chainsaws. And it's like sawing at wood and stuff. And it's really entertaining. Of course, in real life, he would just buy a gun and just go around and shoot them one time and they'd be dead. But this being a movie, uh, especially a Texas Chainsaw Massacre comedy film, it's a lot of fun because he has to get chainsaws, of course, for the chainsaw to do with the end. A gun would just be too easy. There wouldn't even be a point. 
So it makes it a lot of fun with the chainsaw duel. But uh, she's got it recorded, and uh, she talks to him about it. Then Dennis Hopper says he wants to play it on the radio. She plays it on the radio. There's a guy there at the radio station with her. His name is like LG. Uh, he spits a lot. <laughs> it's decently funny, but that's pretty much his character. I'm going to call him Spit. Um, she plays it over the radio station. Uh, they, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family hear it. I'll just say the Sawyers. The Sawyers hear it. Uh, they inform, well, Drayton Sawyer, which is the cook's name in this, but I'm still going to call him the cook because I, I like that name better. <laughs> And uh, they tell the cook about it, and he tells them to basically go there and kill him, kill the uh, kill Caroline Williams, and be done with this shit, so nobody won't know about it. Um, Bill Mosley shows up there. <laughs> LG leaves. Well, LG leaves. Then Bill Mosley shows up there. Caroline Williams is talking to him, and it's he's just fucking hilarious. And he's like, "I want to, I want to tour this place." And he's got like a metal plate in his head, and he keeps scratching it with a coat hanger. And it's just it's so fucking funny just the way he plays it. He was like in Vietnam during the first movie or whatever. How this guy was ever in the war, I have no idea. <laughs> but um, because he seems fucking crazy. I guess he might have been more like Drayton before he went to the war and less crazy. But then he became even more crazy after he came back with the metal plate in his head. But um, you get funny ass scenes where he's like, I wanna I wanna make a request and uh, I want that one you played the uh, played the tonight. He's like. He's like making a chainsaw noise, like, Arr! and he's like, he's like, he's shooting a gun. He's like, psh, psh. he goes, who's that? And he's like, ah, <laughs> that's a fucking Rambo 3 soundtrack. He says something like that. And it's, it's so funny. He's just a riot to watch. This film wouldn't be half as good without him. He really brings this film up. Uh, but anyway, and then uh, Leatherface jumps out. You get a good little jump scare here. He runs towards him, uh, accidentally hits Bill Mosley in the, the side of his metal plate. His name, his character's name is Chop Top in the film. Hits Chop Top in the side in his plate, and Bill Mosley's like, "Non flashback, non flash." It's a little silly, but it, it's it's okay. And he's like, "You messed up my Sony Bono wig." <laughs> and he's uh, hollering at Leatherface. He's like, "Get that bitch!" <laughs> but it's so funny. And Leatherface chases after Caroline Williams. Uh, you get a entertaining scene where LG comes back, and he looks over and sees Bill's mother. See Bill, sees Chop Top. I keep trying to call him by his real name, but sees Chop Top. Throwing fucking records around, and he's like, "You crazy look, little son of a bitch, what are you doing here?" He's like, "Lick my plate, you dog dick." It's so fucking funny. Then Leatherface jumps out and knocks him down, and Bill Mosley hits him in the head with a hammer. This death scene goes on for way too long. I mean, just hitting him in the head with a hammer over and over, and he even spits <laughs> again. But it's a little bit too silly, and uh, but it's good enough. Um. So Leatherface goes back after Caroline Williams. He can't get in because there's like a metal door in the way. So he like fucking busts through the wall and it's pretty entertaining. And I like that they added more to Leatherface's character in this. Giving him more character. He's like really horny in this. Like a horny teenager. Which makes it entertaining. He's like trying to uh, fucking molest her with his saw blade or something like that. And she like gets, she kind of gets a little bit control over him because he's horny for her I guess and so she can basically tell him what to do so he doesn't want to kill her so he just trashes the place up and she's screaming and makes it look like she's dead and he walks back down there and Chop Top's like did you, did you get that bitch and he's like he's shaking his head like yeah yeah <laughs> this is funny and then they basically hightail it out of there Caroline Williams follows him uh, I guess she's following him to find out like where their hideout is so she'll know but I don't know I don't really buy that she would actually follow him but whatever she follows him uh, it turns out Dennis Hopper is uh, following him too uh, he gets there, and there's this big fucking, like, old theme park that they live at now, like, Texas Battleland, I think is what it's called. They get there, and then Caroline Williams is following behind him. She gets out and runs after him. Uh, uh, Dennis Hopper shows up, but she thinks it's more of their family, I guess, and she falls down his trap door in the ground, and Dennis Hopper tries to save her, but he can't. She falls down through it. She's lost in the theme park, and Dennis Hopper gets chainsaws and runs around, like, sawing the place up. <laughs> uh, it's entertaining. But uh, Dennis Hopper is not used to his full potential in this film. But um, he's used enough to where it's to where it's entertaining. Um, but anyway, through the film you get uh, her uh, basically running through the theme park or whatever, or this abandoned theme park, trying to figure out how how to get out of here and hide from the family or whatever. Leatherface finds her. Uh, you got LG there, skin without his face, and he takes the face and puts it on her in a creepy scene and like kind of dances with her. It's kind of creepy for a comedy, but anyway. He ties her up, he leaves, uh, LG gets back up, barely alive, fucking cuts her loose. She gets loose. Um, 
she's uh she's running her uh she gets the fucking face off of her or her face lg's face off her since i don't blame her she's running around there and dennis hopper still cutting up shit dennis hopper actually finds franklin's body from the first movie still with his flashlight in his hand which i thought was pretty fucking humorous why is flashlight still in his hand i don't know that's a little silly but fuck it i thought it was funny um so um uh, Dennis Hopper's still sawing everything down. He's so over the top. It's so funny. He's like, bury the devil. <laughs> it's so fucking funny because he's so ridiculously over the top. Uh, Caroline Williams is running around. She runs from like one uh, like one pipe to another. And uh, the cook sees her. And he's like, did you did you see it, boy? <laughs> Some little bugger just ran through here. And you get Bill, and you get, well, I almost did it again. You get Chop Top running through here. Keep the, the radio on. Keep saying, it's not land. It's a bang. It's a hit. It's a smash. It's so over the top, but it's funny. Cause he's he just the way he delivers his lines is just hilarious. But um, they Leatherface heads up there to get her. She see uh he chases after her. he gets her cornered basically. Jim Side Allen, and Bill and uh, Chop Top show up. Well, Cook and Chop Top. Now I'm starting to call him by his real name. They show up there. Um, uh, <laughs> and uh Chop Top is like Bub's got a girlfriend. <laughs> then he knocks her out. Um, they bring her to the dinner table. You get another dinner table scene in this one again. Grandpa is still alive. How? I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, it works for just, like, the silliness vibe of this film. Like, the look of this, the film really raises up when, uh, Caroline Williams is, like, in the, uh, in the theme park running around and shit. It really raises up from there. And you get a lot of imagery and stuff of corpses and stuff and Christmas lights and everything, which reminds me a lot of House of a Thousand Corpses. And I, you can easily tell Rob Zombie was highly influenced by this film and the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre film when he did The House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. But anyway, back to this film here. Um, you get another dinner table scene and there's it's even more over the top than the one in the first one. You got fucking body parts and it's just chairs and ornaments and shit. And Nubbins' his corpse is there drinking, a, a, I think, a big red through a straw. <laughs> I believe it's big red. Uh, they bring Grandpa out again, and uh, the cook is like, uh, come on, bring her, uh, bring her down so Grandpa can uh, hit her with a sledge. And he's like, come on, bring the bitch down. <laughs> he won't bring her down. <laughs> and finally, they get her down there so he can hit her in the head with a sledge. He can't hit her because he's old as fuck again, raising it up, dropping it. Uh, the cook just grabs it and says, let's get on with it, Grandpa, and just fucking knocks her out. Or I believe he, well, I think he knocks her out for a little bit. Then uh, Dennis Hopper's like singing and shit. And uh, Chop Top starts singing the exact song along with him. It's pretty fucking funny. And, uh, Dennis Hopper jumps out, leaps down. It's entertaining. Um, and then you get the funniest fucking scene in this entire film for me. Where uh, the cook is like, thinks he's from a rival restaurant. <laughs> and uh, he's like trying to pay him off. And he, say, he says, who are you? And he's, Dennis Hopper's like, I'm the Lord of the Harvest. And he's like, is that some new health food bunch? It's silly, but it's... <laughs> It's just so fucking funny. This film uh, is a comedy, but it is hilarious. I can see people being disappointed with, with the first film. Like I said, I like the comedy in this film. I think it's good, and it is funny, especially for the silly, much sillier tone of this film than the first one. Uh, only thing I don't like is how some of the characters are a bit of a joke, like Leatherface. He's just more of a, a, a dope in this one. I don't like the representation of Leatherface in this film. I like the new characteristics of him like being a horny teenager and stuff and adds more to his character. But I don't like him like being just a big goofball and a dope and he like hits his head against the lamp a couple of times like a big goofball. Uh, <laughs> or a bird cage or something and I don't know. It's just a little bit too silly for me. It demeans the character. I actually prefer the representation of the character in the third film. But uh, this film is much better than the third film all around as a whole. Um, but anyway, jump back into it here. Then Dennis Hopper jumps down. Well, uh, yeah, that's what... Uh, Fuck, I'm getting confused there. Uh, back to where I was. Um, they're talking to Dennis Hopper. He sees Caroline Williams, turns on his chainsaw. Cut, they got her hands tied. He cuts the rope. She gets loose, runs off. Uh, Chop Top chases after. The Sawyers are pretty much little pussies right here. <laughs> Dennis Hopper pretty much kicks their ass. Uh, they all basically run off except Leatherface. And he challenges them to a chainsaw duel. Highlight of the film. This is a lot of fun. Uh, they're in a chainsaw duel. Um, they're like trying to cut the shit out of each other again. Dennis Hopper like kick and he kicks Leatherface in the face, sort of knocks him back. The, they jump up on the table. They're chainsawing it on the table. Um, oh, before I forget, the cook gets chainsawed in the ass by Dennis Hopper, <laughs> which is like so ridiculously silly, but it's still funny. He's underneath the table. And Nubbins has got a fucking grenade, and uh, he <laughs> the cook takes the grenade. Um, 
Well, it's in Nubbin's corpse, and the cook takes the grenade, and he's just thinking about blowing himself and everybody to hell and back. Uh, he's got the he's got the grenade. Um, uh, and then their chainsaw dueling on top of the table. It's entertaining. He uh, uh, chainsaws Leatherface through the gut, which is pretty neat. Uh, but then Grandpa, like, the Leatherface is still fighting, which in real life, of course, he wouldn't be. But uh, this being really silly, over the top horror, black, uh, a black horror comedy, it's entertaining and makes sense for this film's universe. But he's still fighting. And uh, Grandpa throws a hammer and it misses Dennis Hopper. Or if that was the sledgehammer, it misses in his hopper and fucking hits Leatherface and knocks him down. And that pretty much just, like, takes Leatherface out. Uh, it's kind of a joke ending for the character. I don't really like that. Um, uh, the cook is underneath there. The, Leatherface, the chainsaw that's through Leatherface's gut goes through the table and chainsaws the cook in the back. Pretty much killing him. He drops the grenade and blows Dennis Hopper and everybody there up and kills Grandpa and Dennis Hopper and fucking himself and... Leatherface 2, they're all dead. This is pretty much the end. I wouldn't even say watch any of the movies after this one. Because they're all like get lesser and less quality. I would say watch the first one, then this film, and just be done with it. Uh, but uh, but they're all dead. Um, except for uh, Chop Top chasing after Caroline Williams. She makes it to like the top of this little mountain. And up there is like their grandma. And meanwhile, uh, Chop Top is like slicing her in the back with a fucking razor. And... Uh, they make it up there, and there's Grandma's corpse there, and it's supposed to be like Chainsaw Heaven. It's pretty funny. Uh, she's still got a chainsaw in her arms, and Caroline Williams gets it and like trying to start it, and uh, Chop Top runs over there, and he's like, this is the funniest shit I've ever heard. One of the funniest shit in the movie. Some of the funniest shit in the movie, I mean. He looks at her and says, you killed Grandma, you hog bitch. <laughs> and it's so funny because she's a fucking corpse already, and he's like, you killed her, so I was wondering what condition she was in before, but it's so funny. And so he cases after her and starts slicing the fuck out of her back. Um, then um, she takes the chainsaw, finally gets it on, slices his gut, like slices his stomach open, and he falls backwards down the big drain pipe, very entertaining. And then you get a really fun little ending where she's fucking doing the chainsaw dance again, where she's like, well, <laughs> needs therapy, of course, after this incident's over. It's like the woman from the first movie, and she's doing the chainsaw dance is like a little... Uh, tribute to the, I guess, I guess the filmmakers put it in as a little wall callback to the first movie, of course, with Leatherface doing his chainsaw dance. Well, it's really entertaining here, too. She's, like, just swinging the chainsaw around because she's, like, so <laughs> out of it by this point. But it's entertaining and a lot of fun. For this sequel, uh, it's a it's a really good movie. I'd give it a low four stars. Uh, it's a, a lot of fun. Uh, it was definitely worth seeing in theaters. I can understand why Toby Hooper would go a different way with this one because uh, you just could not recreate the horror and the intensity of the first one. Like I said in my review for it, it was just a pure accident. So he went in a completely different direction for this one. Some Most of the comedy works. Some of it doesn't. Sometimes the characters are a little bit too too much of a joke, especially Leatherface. He's way too goofy. Uh, but um, it works, and I, like I said, I'd give it a low four stars. All the acting in it is fine. For this version of Leatherface, which I don't like that much, the actor does fine. Uh, you know, Jim Sidow as the cook, he does fine once again. But he's more, he loses that extra element like he had in the first one where he was trying to, he kind of seemed like in the first one he didn't want to be crazy, but in this one he just is crazy. I mean, his character just like the rest of them. They take that element away pretty much. Uh, Bill Mosley is Chop Top. He's fine. Uh, he's the highlight of the film. He's the best thing about the film. Without him, I'd probably hate this movie. Um, or wouldn't care too much for it. Caroline Williams in the film as the female lead. I think her name is Stretch, or that's her nickname, or whatever. She does fine. She's likable. She's not as good as Marilyn Burns, or as likable as Marilyn Burns in the first one. But she does good with what she has. Um, she's entertaining to see and watch. Um, so basically to round this film up, it's a low four stars. Uh, when I say it's a low four stars, I'm not judging this film mostly compared to the first one because this is a completely different film. Uh, this is a black comedy. You can't judge it compared to the first one. This is a comedy, uh, a dark comedy. If you try to judge it compared to the first movie or compared to the horror and intensity of the first one, you're going to hate this film. You are probably going to hate it. But seeing it as a black comedy, it's a fuckload of fun. And uh, the character of Chop Top is fucking hilarious. Uh, but I'll see you guys again with a review for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. This is a really good sequel, in my opinion. Don't even bother watching any of the films after this one. Uh, this this film ends the story. I mean, all the family is dead. There's not really any reason. Well, all of them's dead except for Chop Top. Well, but you can just picture him being dead. I mean, 
even though you don't see him, he's he's pretty much dead. I mean, you can just say he's dead. Um, but as far I know, there was like an All American Massacre thing that was gonna be like a spinoff film that never got made. So that film's not canon to this franchise since it well never existed because it never got made. Uh, that was gonna be a spinoff with a Chop Tops character. But since it never got made, you don't have to count it. So you can pretty much just consider this the end with all the family members dead. Um, and that's the way it should be. There really didn't need to be any sequel after this film. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, 1 and 2 is the franchise. That's it. It's over. The rest of them are just like what-if stories. But um, this film uh, is really good. I wouldn't say it's great. And I don't consider it a classic along the lines of the first film. But I consider it a really good movie. Uh, to end this review, uh, you, I think if you go in with an open mind and understand that this is a, a black comedy and done completely different in style than the first film, that you'll really enjoy this one. So I'll see you guys again with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Uh, I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you guys later, and until the next review.